In this video, I'm planning to do uh, and show some of the financial functions that are available in Excel. And I'm using Excel 2013, and this is part of that series. But I'm also going to add this video as part of my 2007 and 2010 Excel, as the steps are very much the same. So this will be just a nice little introduction to all the types of financial functions which are available. And we'll try to look at some of the important ones. So the first one I want to talk about is called the future value function. It's called the FV. Now anytime you wanted to start the functions, you can go to the formulas tab, look in the financial section, and in here you can start seeing them. And anytime you had a question, just point to it and it should give you an explanation of what that function does. So if I scroll down, I should see in the alphabetical order FV and when you point to it, it says returns the future value of an investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. So you want to figure out like what will happen if I make a certain amount of payments every month and at a certain interest rate and for so many years, what amount of money will I have in the future? So for that, I've already done this in here, so I'm going to just open it up and I'll do it again. And I'm going to leave a copy of this file in my, you'll see a link in the description below where you can download the file from, so you'll have an access to this. So I'm just going to click on this FX because in this cell I've already done the function. So if I click on it, it opens this section up. Now at any time you had any questions, you can actually click on any of those boxes and then you can read what it says in there. So the first line is for rate. So that is, what is the rate? So I've in this Excel spreadsheet, I've actually added and entered all my rates. So 5% is the rate. So I click on that cell and I divide it by 12 because I need to figure out what is the monthly interest rate? So you have to divide it by 12. The next is the NPER. So whenever you see that word, it just means how many payments are you planning to make? So my payment here is in number B3, in the cell B3, which is 2. So I click on it and I multiply it by 12. So it will be 2 multiplied by 12. And I can change the numbers anytime I want and the values will change automatically. The payment, which is what amount of payment are you planning to make on a monthly basis? So 100 is the payment. And you see there I put a negative B5 because in Excel the idea is when the money is leaving your pocket in some form or the other, it's going out of your pocket, it needs to be a negative value so that the, your results in this case will be a positive otherwise your future value will show up as a negative number if you don't put this as a negative so whenever you get a negative result you know that you need to go in and change some of the positive values to negative so that you will get a positive result and then the present value is are you planning to like start off your account with a certain amount so in this case I'm saying I'm gonna start out with ten thousand dollars so even this is going out of my pocket, so I'm going to put a minus B1, which is the cell where the information is. And again, it always provides you with the information here. And the last line, the type, which is if you are making the payment at the beginning of the period, you're going to put 1. If you're going to make the payment at the end of the period, you type 0 or just leave it empty. So it depends, you know, when do you plan to make the payment. So I'm just going to click OK. And there is the result. Now the good thing with Excel is if I change this value and I say, you know what, I'm not going to start with any amount. I change it to zero. Now at 5% interest rate after two years of making a monthly payment of $100, I'll have $2,529.09. And if I increase that to 10%, now it goes higher. And if I increase it to, uh, say, 20 years, now I can see. So you can start seeing as you make the changes, you can start figuring it out that 
how much future value you will have based on these things. So I'll just do this one one more time. I'll delete it. I'll go to formulas, financial, look for FV, future value. And I start with the rate. I click on the cell where I have my rate divided by 12 so that I need come to know what is the monthly percentage. NPER is how many payments are you planning to make. So I click on the cell which has that multiply by 12. So that will give me how many monthly payments I'll make. That will be 20 multiplied by 12 and it gives me the answer there to 40. Payment. It is how, what kind of uh, payment are you making? So I'll put minus and then click on the cell which has my monthly payment which in this case is 100 present value you don't need this need to type this information the first three things are the important thing the present value doesn't matter whether you do something or not but I could just say minus and then click on the cell where I will be having my present value that is how much money I'm gonna start my account with and then the type which is are you going to make the payment at the start of the month or end of the month if I leave it empty it means I'm going to make the payment at the end of the month the period which is in this case I'll click OK and there is the number and if you go on to make any changes your values will automatically change so this is the function called future value I'll come to the next one on the bottom there's the sheets and this one is for present value so if I go to financial scroll down in the alphabetical way and the other way if you wanted to find this function is if you click on this FX and then in there you just type the word PV and you hit enter and it should find it for you and there should be the explanation present value returns the present value of an investment the total amount that a series of future payment is worth now so you're trying to figure out what the present value like how much money do I need to put down right now so that I'll have a certain amount of money in the future I'm just gonna hit cancel here so I'm gonna click on the cell B6 where I've already typed the function I'm gonna click on the FX because it will start the present value and so the idea is in this case I've got this final amount of 1 million and I'm trying to figure out how much money do I need to put down now and maybe along with the monthly payment to figure out at the interest rate I know uh, how much money should I put in my account so that I'll have that amount at the end of that term in this case is 25 years so again the rate which will be B2 where I might have my interest rate divided by 12 NPER is the number of years which is B3 and I multiply by 12 so that I there's 300 payments will be made the payment is the I'm making a monthly payment on top of whatever money I want to put in on top of that I'm gonna make a monthly payment of 200 and B1 is my future value which is the final amount 1 million and I put the payment in a negative because the money is going to leave my pockets and the type I put one which is at the start of the period rather than at the end of the month and I click OK so it gives me the result 60,747 now it's in negative because the red and the bracket means it's a negative number because I need to give this money to make that change so you have to put this money right now and make a monthly payment of 200 dollars so at the end of 25 years at 10 percent interest you're gonna have a million dollars now if I change this 200 to zero that means I won't be making any monthly payment so then you will need to put down eighty two thousand nine hundred and forty dollars to actually reach that amount in 25 years and if I increase this to 500 a month then you need to put down less money right now so so that's the idea of the present value and I've got an example here that I'm going to look at with the present value here so I'll just come to that sheet so in this example what I've done is I've done the present value thing but what I wanted to figure out is that I've got these different years five years 
10 years, 15, 20, 25, and also different percentage. So I'm trying to figure out like at what percentage and how many years, what kind of uh, amount I need to put in to get that desired result. So in here, I just click on the cell and I'm just going to start the FX so you can see what I have done. So what I did is that my interest is A2. So if you remember from the absolute reference example that there is that dollar sign but I don't want to make A2 absolute I only want to make the A absolute so that when I use the fill handle and I go sideways A2 will change to A3 A4 A5 A6 A7 A8 and A9 kind of a thing I want it to change in that order however I don't want A to change so that's why I put the dollar in front of A and not in front of 2 because this will allow 2 to change to 3 and the same way so that's the rate in the NPER I did B1 divided multiplied by 12 so B1 is the 5 multiplied by 12 that gives me the month of payments and I can choose whether I want to make a monthly payment or not. In this case, I'm leaving it empty. And then I said my future value that I want is 1 million. So when I click OK, it gives me the number 860,000 and 869 dollars. That means if I want to have a million dollars in five years at 3%, I have to give away right now in the bank or whoever it is that much amount and I'm just going to delete all this just to show you how this will work so now if I click here and I use the fill handle and I pull it down so now you can see that right here I've got a uh, let me just turn on the show formula so it'll make it easy so I've just in the formulas tab there's a button called show formulas so you see how fill handle A2 has changed to A3, so A didn't change, and the B1 stays the same because I did not want it to change that. And because it's going down, even though the B doesn't have a dollar, it will not change. The 1 will not change because it's just going down right now. And I'm just going to turn off the show formula. Now if I look for the fill handle and go sideways, you see the numbers came up let's look at show formulas and you see how A2 stayed A2 but B1 changed to C1 because in this case I want to use the 10 years so that's right and here it changed to D so this is the way uh, absolute reference comes into play where you can use that individual dollar signs so I'm going to turn off the show formula and now if I highlight all this and look for fill handle and all my calculations are done. So what it means is that if I give $741,000 for 10 years at 3%, I'll get 1 million. And if I get a 10% interest rate for 25 years and I give them $82,939, I'll have a million dollars at the end of 25 years. So you can also make your own up and this is a nice way to figure out uh, how to go about making investments or figuring out how much money you need to save to put in the bank account and also what interest rate you should try to find. At least 10% is very much heard of, unheard of in the North America. I know in Asian countries you can get somewhere sometimes 10%, 8%, which is pretty good. Now we'll come to the payment sheet for calculations on payment. So in the payment function, what I want to figure out is that I've got a loan, a principal amount of a loan of $10,000 at an interest of 10%. And the term of the loan is 5 years. So the payments are 60 payments. So I just did equal to 12 multiplied by 5, which is B3 in this case. And now I need to figure out, so how much of a monthly payment will I be making? So what I did is up here. I just did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 60. So to do this, what I had done is I typed 1 and 2, highlighted it, and then fill handle, 
down so that it will put three four five six and because I want to figure out all my payment plan and then I click here and I started the financial and then look for PMT and there it is PMT calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate so I'll just start the FX and this is the way it will start so all you need to tell it is what is the rate so in my case the rate is B2 which is 10 percent divided by 12 again to find the monthly what is my NPER which is how many payments do you plan to make so I've just clicked on 60 that's where my payments are I don't need to multiply it by 60 because I've already done that there and my present value is B1 which is the 10,000 and I made all of them absolute because they won't be changing for any one of them and then when I click OK it gives me the number 212 and I need to leave this negative because that's the money that's going to go from my pocket so that's why none of these numbers were negative in the calculation okay and here and then I did a fill handle because they all the payments for every month is going to be the same the payments will not change at all on a monthly basis but now I want to figure out is the the function called IPMT so in the financial if you go to IPMT it tells you returns the interest payment for a given period of an investment based on a periodic constant payment and a constant interest rate so simply put what is trying to figure out is out of your total payment of 212 how much is the interest and then we'll look at the other function PPMT which is and how much was the actual principal the principal amount is what is removed from the 10,000 so that next month your interest will be charged on the difference rather than the whole 10,000 so let's look at so I'm just gonna click here and you'll start the IPMT I'll just click on this FX so what I did here is that the rate is the same B2 and it's, I made the B2 absolute because it doesn't need to change when I use fill handle because everybody needs to use the same interest rate the per is the period the period is the one two three four so I clicked on a7 in this case which is one and again what I did is I made the A absolute by putting a dollar sign in front of it because when I use the scroll fill handle the next line should become A2 so that's why or no sorry not A2 A8 which will be the second payment so that's why I did that and the NPER which is number of payments which are 60 which doesn't change and my present value which is the B1 which is I made it absolute so that when I use fill handle it doesn't change and just to point out there is this bar so there is some type and things so which is again are you gonna make the payment at the start or at the end of the month in this case I'm saying well I'm gonna make it at the end of the month so I'll just click OK and you see what it does is it actually tells me that eighty three dollars and thirty three cents is the interest out of that two hundred and twelve and then you can use fill handle and it will give you all the interest for every part of your payment and then I'll go to this one which is PPMT which is when you go to financial and look for PPMT and which just gives me the actual principal amount that I'm making for my ten thousand dollar loan so let's look at it by clicking on FX and in this case again the idea is your rate which is 10% so I click on that cell make it absolute per is what is the payment number which is a7 and again I made a absolute not the 7 so that the next line will become a8 NPER is the number of payments which is 60 and the present value is 10,000 I click OK and then I'll fill handle now if you look on the bottom your PPMT should come up to ten thousand dollars because that's your actual payment and then this is the interest and then when you add these two numbers together this is your total so twenty seven hundred and forty eight dollars two seven four eight 
is the interest that you will be paying on a loan for ten thousand dollars at ten percent interest for five years so that's the idea and if you did not wanted to do this calculation and you just wanted to figure out the cumulative interest so there is a function called C-U-M-P-M-I-T and there is a function called C-U-M principle which is you want to just figure out the principal amount which is pretty much 10,000 so cumulative payment interest so if I go to financial and there it is there's the function so if I just start the FX so we can look at it so the idea is the rate which is B2 10% divided by 12 NPER is your number of payments present value is the loan amount the start period is 1 because you want to figure out from 1 payment number 1 to the end period of payment number 60 so that's the end period so that's the start period and end period and this is required and also the type which is when you're gonna make the payment at the start or at the end and I find that if you don't put that it gives you an error message so you, you may need to put 0 or 1 depending on what time when you plan to make the payment and you click OK and there is the value and the same thing with cumulative principle which in this case it doesn't apply because we already know the principle so this is the payment function and we'll come to the next sheet you can pause the video at any time if you needed to and rewind or fast forward uh, we'll come to the next one NPER which is trying to figure out how many payments so NPER function is trying to figure out how much time it will take for you to pay off a loan or to meet an investment target so say I need to figure out that I have I, I know the interest rate and I know how much I'm gonna make so I need to figure out how much time how many months will it take for me to reach a target amount so that's the idea of NPER so I'll again just go from the financial but I'll start the FX here so I can explain to you so the idea is rate which is pretty simple now which is B2 divided by 12 payment which is how much you're gonna make every month you know so I just put minus B1 which is 150 which is going out of my pocket so it's negative present value which is are you gonna start off with an initial balance so I'm like yeah in this case I will 500 so I put it negative and then what is my future value so that is 4500 so my target is 4500 and uh, I'm gonna make hundred fifty dollar payment and my interest rate is 3.5 percent and I click OK so it tells me that it will take me 25 months so that's gonna take a long time to get to that so I might as well find something with a higher interest rate and then maybe that will start reducing and maybe make a little bit more payments and that will bring it down to seven months if I make five hundred dollar payments in an account which gives me ten percent interest I will be able to reach my balance of four forty five hundred in seven months almost eight months so that's the benefit of Excel now that you just keep on changing the values here and now say if I wanted to figure out that say I had a eight thousand dollar loan and I was gonna and the interest on this credit card say this was a credit card that and it was eighteen percent I didn't have any initial balance and I was gonna make a payment of five hundred dollars a month at eighteen percent interest I will be finishing it in fourteen months and if you go with what the credit card companies tell you which is pay a minimum of ten dollars it's gonna take you hundred and seventy two months so that is equal to 172 divided by 12 14 point three years to pay off a debt of eight thousand dollars so that's what kills you the 18 percent interest rate so watch out with credit card bills and the next one we'll look at is rate which is I know my initial balance I know my monthly payment and I want to reach a certain value in the future so I want to find out what interest rate should I need do I need to look for so I've got all the other things I just need to find out like at what percentage of interest rate will get me there 
knowing that I need to put it for three years or whatever the timing might be. So that you can use the rate function which is again under financial and it should tell you when you point to it. Returns the interest rate per period of a loan or an investment for example and a 6% APR or something like that. So I'll just start the FX. So I think I'll have to do this on my own again. So I'll have to start it financial and then start a rate. Okay, there it is. I don't know why this didn't pop up for the rate. NPER, which is how many payments do you plan to make? And that is this multiplied by 12. That is 3 multiplied by 12. Payment, like how much monthly payment are you planning to make? So it will be negative 150. And are you starting off, PV is, are you starting off with certain amount of money in the account? So I'll say whatever is in this, so negative, whatever is in this cell. And now it's what are you going to, what's your goal? So I'll put my goal is this. So that's my goal that I want to reach. And then the type is, are you going to make a payment at the start, at the end? Again, if you leave it empty, it's going to be at the end of the month, which is zero. So I'll click OK. And now you see it gives 0 0.88, which is a monthly thing. So what you have to do is, at the end of the formula, I'm going to put multiply by 12, and I hit Enter. So I get 10.5%. And I think that's why, because I added that multiply by 12, this FX did not give me the window that I just saw earlier. So I need 10.5% interest rate. Now, if I don't start with the balance, I'm five, just trying to make a monthly payment. Oh my god, that's so crazy to reach 20,000. Let's make it 5,000. So I need. So I'll put negative zero there. So I'll need a 5.34% interest rate. And now again, if I just go ahead and put it in 500, so I need to get a 10.68% interest rate to reach $5,000 in three years. And uh, I'm just going to hit undo a few times. Okay, so there it is, then the, what I started off with. But now if I change this three years to four years, now you see it changed it to 4.75%. So that's the calculation that you can do with rate, which is trying to figure out what interest rate do I need to find to reach my goal. And the last function I'm going to talk about is this RRI function. Now this function is only available for Excel 2013, not in the previous version, but it's a good thing to know if you started using the new version that this function is there. And simply put, all it does is you had an initial balance of 5000 and finally you got the returns of $7,433 in three years. So RRI allows you to find out what interest rate did you earn like so you know sometimes an investment is made and you don't know what you're gonna get you know at the end you got it now you wanna figure out quickly what interest did you earn so that's this calculation which is the RRI calculation and again this is only available in 2013 so let's just look at it by clicking on the FX so the arguments are pretty simple NPER is Duration 3, and I'm not dividing by 12 because I want to find out the yearly interest rate. Present value, which is P2, future value, which is the final 7433, and it gives me the results. And if I change these numbers, I should start to see whatever results interest rate is supposed to be. So that's it for this video. Um, hope you learned a little bit about the financial functions again there are lots of different functions which are available that you can check out by going to the financial section and then start pointing to different buttons and you can always go to the help section from here and in 2007 you may need to go to the help section in the corner 
what the question mark is, which you can do it in 2010 and 13. Uh, the only benefit in 2010 and 2013 is that when you go to any of the functions, you can actually click in the help section right here as part of that function. And for some people who are interested in doing some depreciation type functions, there are some functions available in Excel and they are, I'll just point out to you, one is called SLN, it's called a straight line depreciation, SYD which is it's a different type of a depreciation. Uh, there is another one called DDB of an asset for a specified period using double declining balance method and there is the DB for depreciation which is using a fixed declining balance method so maybe for a lot of you you might be familiar with these ideas that you can look into it and again just look at the help section look at the financial stuff and just understand the meaning of these functions so whenever a question comes up you'll be able to think of a function to try to solve that problem thank you for watching